Welcome to this GiftWorks video. My name is Steve Faithful, and this is the fourth of an eight-part video series talking about how easy it is to import information into GiftWorks. In this video, I'm going to be talking about some options that are available to you from within the import process. These options are important because they can drastically affect the results of your import. And so as I go through them, please just look at them to ensure or to understand them better to know what decisions you're going to need to make when you come to those options in the import process as well. To get started, I'm going to simply sign into my GiftWorks database, and I'm going to go to the Settings area, Database and Maintenance, Import and Export Data, and Import a File. Now, I'm going to be importing information uh, from an Excel file, and the principles that I'm going to talk about here apply whether you're using an Excel file, a text file, or an Access database. I'm going to start with a file called Import.org, which is a file that contains not only donor information, or I should say person information, that is in this case you'll see the top row contains a name called Steve Faithful, but it also contains a column called Organization. In this case, Steve Faithful, and um, I also have an organization name listed as Mission Research. Well, GiftWorks, as, as it's importing, needs to better understand which one really is the donor here. Is the donor Steve Faithful, or is the donor Mission Research? That, that basic question forms the basis for the first option that's listed when I click the Next button on this Options page. This first option is called Creating Donors. And what we're trying to ask here, trying to determine is, when GiftWorks encounters a row of data, and you'll see it listed in this question at the top, if the row of data you're importing contains both a first, middle, or last name, that is a person's name, and an organization name, how should the donor be created? And what GiftWorks is trying to understand is, if I were to ask you, which one really is the donor? Is Steve Faithful the donor, and Mission Research just happens to be the company where he works? Or is Mission Research the donor, and Steve Faithful just happens to be a contact at that organization? Well, that basic question needs to be answered um, by GiftWorks as it's importing. GiftWorks wants to know, when I encounter a row of data that contains both of those, how should I treat or how should I create the donor? This, uh, this top option where it says create as a donor without a profile simply means what we're trying to say is create as a donor that is that's not an organization. So in this case it's going to say create as a donor without a profile answering the question Steve Faithful is the donor. If I say create as a donor with an organizational profile what I'm saying is when I encounter a row of data that contains both well it's saying that the organization is the donor. So in this case, if I chose the bottom option, Mission Research would be the donor, and Steve Faithful would simply be a contact at that organization. So let me show you how, uh, how uh, the import process can also um, can give you feedback or give you a, a greater understanding of what's going to happen when you import information. So if I choose this top option, which says Create as a Donor Without a Profile, which means that it's going to choose the option to, um, to indicate that Steve is the donor, I'm going to go ahead and quickly map this information, map organization, first, middle, and last name of my of the person's name. I'm going to ignore everything else. I'm going to click the next button. I have no mapping errors, and I'm going to click, I'm going to come to my test import screen, which if, if you remember from a previous video, provides me um, a feedback about what the import's going to do. So once I click on test import, I'm going to get some feedback saying what it's going to do. In this case, even though it detected both Steve and Mission Research, because of the option I chose, it chose that Steve is going to be the donor. If I click on Back, and I change that option to say instead of choosing, instead of saying Create as a Donor without a profile, if I say Create as a Donor with an organization profile, it's simply going to take that information. Once again, if I run a test, it's going to, it's going to choose Mission Research as the donor now. Um, even though it does detect Steve Faithful and Mission Research, because of the option that I chose, I see feedback here that GiftWorks would import this as Mission Research. Some of you may be saying, you know what, my Excel spreadsheet contains, um, contains information like that, um, but the answer might be different for every row. Maybe one row you'd answer it Mission Research, and the other row you'd answer it Steve Faithful. Well, it might, uh, it might lead you to a conclusion that you're going to need to create separate Excel spreadsheets or separate data sources to be able to answer this question um, one time for the entire bit of data that it's going to import. So your, ex your entire Excel spreadsheet is going to be imported with this option in mind. And so you may need to split your Excel spreadsheets into multiple spreadsheets so that this, this answer will apply to your entire spreadsheet. So that's about creating donors, and that really has to do with when GiftWorks encounters a row of data that contains both a person's name and an organization name. 
The second option is about creating household donors. And what this is, let me go back and I'm going to change my Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to change it to something called Import HH, which simply stands for Import Household. Let me show you this Excel spreadsheet. It contains a little bit more information. It contains a donor, a person's name that is Steve Faithful, but it also contains my wife's name, Vicki Faithful. So in this case, well, I have Steve and Vicki. Um, this represents, in, the, in this row in particular, represents um, two people that are part of the same household. Um, one of the questions that GiftWorks is going to want an answer for is, if the row of data you're importing contains both a donor name and a spouse name, how should GiftWorks import this donor? Well, for some of you out there, you want to track a, a household of donors as a single donor within GiftWorks, meaning Steve and Vicki Faithful, you can represent them with a single donor, and perhaps you might take that single donor and you might attribute all their donations or all their contributions to that one donor. Um, GiftWorks wants to know best how it should create this donor within GiftWorks as well. Some of you may say, you know what, if I'm importing Steve and Vicki, it's important for me to, to track them as individual donors within GiftWorks so that I can track volunteerism or event attendance or other information individually. Perhaps even you want to track contributions individually. If that's the case, you're going to want GiftWorks to create these as two individuals rather than a single household. Some of you may be even saying, I want both. So when I click on Next, when I come to this option creating household donors and it says, if a row of data you're importing contains both a donor name and a spouse name, how should GiftWorks respond? The top option says, create it as a single household donor. Now if I go through, I'm going to quickly map this information, Na map first, middle, and last name. And then I'm going to also map my spouse's name, spouse first, and spouse last. I'm going to ignore everything else. And I'm going to click on Next. And I'm going to come to my Test Import screen once again. And I click on Test Import. What you're going to notice is that GiftWorks has chosen, because of the option where I said create a single household donor, GiftWorks has said, I'm going to create a faithful, comma, Steve and Vicky donor, a single donor, as a household um, to handle this information. That is a per for those of you who want to track a household as a single entity, one donor, you can go ahead and choose that option. For some of you who say, you know what, I want to track them as individuals rather than um, as a common household, you may want to choose the bottom option, which is to create a donor and an affiliate spouse um, and create a relationship between them. Now, some of that contains some GiftWorks um, language that you may want to look up and help to better understand what an affiliate is and things like that. But the bottom line is that it's going to create them as two individual donors. Now, if I go back to my test import screen, I'm going to see that uh, GiftWorks has chosen now, because of the option I chose, to create Steve and to create Vicky individually. Now, you can use this to track um, contributions individually and involvement individually. Um, but for some of you, you may be saying, well, that's, that's OK, too. Perhaps I want to do that. Some of you may be saying, I want to create a single household donor. And by using the sub option here, you can also create other things. So if you wanted to create a single household donor, but you wanted to create Steve as an individual as well to track information for Steve, I can click on Next, 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 run a test import which it, you'll show it's going to create Steve and Vicky as a household, maybe where I can track contributions to that house, uh, from that household. But perhaps I want to track Steve individually as well. Maybe I want to track information about Steve, maybe his involvement with my organization or contributions individually as distinct from the household. Some of you may be saying, well, that's OK too, but I want to actually create both Steve and Vicky. And there's other options here as well. But in th this is probably the most extreme in, uh, situation or extreme option. That if I go back to my test screen, not only can I create Steve and Vicky as a household, but I can also create Vicky individually and Steve individually. That gives you the most flexibility, perhaps, to uh, track contributions from the household and track involvement individually. But you've also now created, instead of perhaps just creating one donor, I'm creating three donors. So you'll see how this option can drastically affect how your information gets imported. Um, so this is one, er one of those areas, especially, that we say, during the import process is probably not the best time to answer this question. What you may want to do, especially as it comes to households, is work with GiftWorks a bit before you get to the import process. Go ahead and add a donor, create households, and try to set up some donors to better understand how you want to track your households within GiftWorks. Especially that option, that creating household donors, that option can drastically affect the number of donors that created 
and uh, and it really should reflect how you want to track your don your donors within GiftWorks. And so hopefully, once you determine that, perhaps outside of the import process, when you get to that option within the import process, you're going to better know how to answer that question um, before you ever even get to the import. Uh, but certainly, hopefully, with this in mind, you're going to be able to choose uh, the correct options for you and your organization um, when you come to a when you come uh, through your import process. So whether it's creating donors that are organizations or creating households, uh, this video hopefully has helped you better understand how you should answer these questions. This bottom option, updating existing donors, will be um, will be addressed in another video in a subsequent video. So keep an eye out for that one, and I thank you for watching this video.